Yo, 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 welcome back to more Trinoline. What's going on, my guys? <clears throat> so, that le last episode was uh, actually pretty good uh, compared to the episode the other day. <laughs> Where they were just sitting on the beach and it was really annoying. But, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's jump in this. We thought we'd be safe for a little while, but it started to rain buckets in no time at all. This isn't good. Neither of us had umbrellas, so we put our bags over our heads, huddled together, and rushed along the path home. Ah, that rain was something else. Ugh, sorry, Shun. If you'd been on your own, you wouldn't have gotten so wet. Since I can't run. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. I have... I should have brought an umbrella. Ah, I got pretty wet, so would you mind if I stayed at your place until I draw off? Huh? You've got a dryer, right? Can I borrow it? You can toss your clothes in with mine while I'm at it. Wait, Shun, are you listening? You really look so sexy with her rain-soaked clothes that I found myself inadvertently entranced by her. Oh, yeah, I'm totally listening. I forgot how quickly the weather can change on this island. Yeah, it does. Yuri, if you stay in those clothes, you're going to catch a cold, so... Wouldn't it be a good idea if you took a shower? Huh? Her face flushed bright red when she realized her state of dress. <clears throat> nah, I'll be alright. Come on, it's your house, so you should take one. I can take one later. You get in first. You sure? Then why don't we get in together? Uh, I froze in place and my heart thundered relentlessly in my chest upon hearing such a suggestion. Hello, mouse? There we go. Why not? Yuri gave me a push on the back and we headed for the bathroom together like so. Damn. Ha, huh, that was nice. But I'm worn out. After we finish our bath, Yuri changed into her freshly dried clothes. Time for a little break. I'm gonna grab some water. Woof. She looked really cute whenever she smiled. Ellipsis. Just as we had discussed, I planned to be with her every step of the way until the very end. But after thinking it over more, I couldn't do it. The more time we spent together, the more I fell in love with her. Yuri, I, on second thought, Hmm? I didn't want to live on knowing this was the end. I didn't want to let her go. I wanted to be with her forever. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Even if that wasn't what Yuri wished for. All the same, I didn't want her to give up. It didn't matter if it was only a little. I wanted to find hope. Alright, alright. And they got busy. <laughs> Simply undergoing treatment wouldn't make Yuri's wish come true. As for me, I hope Yuri would agree to the treatment and actively pursue a long, happy life. During lunch break, I asked Sarah for her opinion after she finished grabbing her food. It's rare for you to come to me for advice. Okay then, meet me at the birdcage after school. Thank you. By the way, what I want to talk about involves Yuri. I see. Got it. Inferring that it wasn't a subject I could delve further into here, Sarah kept things brief like she always did. I let Yuri know I had something to attend to, then headed for the birdcage after school. Since this is about Yuri, does it have to do with her illness? Yeah. I've been curious about it myself, so I asked her about it. You did? According to Sarah, Yuri had been very open and had told her roughly the same as she told me. 
I'm not sure how much Yuri told you, Shun. But she has been denying treatment. Also, I more or less know why. I'm sure you haven't accepted it, huh? I would like to make Yuri's wish come true, but I think that's misguided. Sarah acted like she had seen right through me and explained everything I had been feeling aloud. Even if her life is extended by undergoing that cutting edge Hukram treatment, in the end, all humans die. While I do believe that medical care can help people lead full lives, no human can escape death. The point being, medical procedures only have meaning to the living to the living person they are performed upon. Living person? I guess that's obvious though, even if you treat a dead person, it's not like they will come back to life. Unless you're Jesus. Medical care was designed to make a living person's life easier or improve upon their overall quality of life. If you think about it that way, it's difficult to say whether undergoing, undergoing treatments which keep someone alive can really be called living. I would obviously like it if Yuri continued to live. Yeah, Yuri said something similar. Once she began Hukram treatments, she wouldn't be able to attend school for a while. The replacement operations would continue for the rest of her life, and naturally there was no guarantee of success every single time. There's a chance that the semi-peaceful lifestyle she had now would never return. What does living mean to Yuri? If it means spending time with you, going to school, and making fun memories with her friends, then... She wouldn't be able to call daily treatments, which steal her happiness away living. But if she doesn't receive treatment, then she'll definitely die very soon. Assuming some sort of miracle doesn't occur. However, advancements in medical technology are made every day. It's entirely possible new methods of treatments will be discovered. Any hope of that is very slim, though. It's far more likely that Yuri will lose her life before that happens. The idea that the new treatments could be discovered later was exactly as Dr. Monami had said. But if she never received any treatment whatsoever, her lifespan obviously wouldn't be extended any further. This is what occurred to me while I talked with Yuri. Even if she does have body, rep body parts replaced via Hukram, they won't last forever either. Once they break, they will be replaced. That will keep repeating. I believe that android or mechanical bodies can live forever. But if their parts aren't replaced periodically, that's the end. In the sense it's conceivable that even machines won't last an eternity. Of course, I likely only submit to that line of thinking because I'm human. I understood the meaning of her words, but it was fundamentally difficult to comprehend. All the same, wondering whether one would retain a sense of self after replacing body parts was a question without an answer, especially while undergoing the Hukram treatment. So did you find your answer, Shun? Huh? Uh, I came here to ask her advice because I wondered if you had any, uh, any ideas. So you were planning to rely on others from the very beginning? I mean, isn't that what he does... Uh, always? That isn't what I meant. It's just that, I've heard before that the RRC was providing technical assistance with the development of those parts. I'm not a parts engineer or anything, of course, it's not as if I have no understanding of how they're com composed. As such, it's a little difficult for me to recommend any solutions of a medical nature regarding it. Besides, if there were any treatment options aside from Hukrim, I'm sure Dr. Monami would be investigating and discussing them with Yuri. That's true. I realized just how powerless I was. I thought I said powderless? He has no powder? As much as I wanted to do something for Yuri, I felt useless. Which means my only choice is to persuade Yuri to receive treatments. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that I have no medical solution to offer you. Does that mean you have some other type of plan? It might not be quite what you'd call a solution. But, as I told you at the start, I want Yuri to remain a living person. Meaning... If your wish is for Yuri to live, if that's truly what you wish for, 
If it were someone precious to me, I would never give up. I'd fight against it using any means necessary. You'll never produce any results if you're afraid of taking risks. Sarah. I recalled when she first introduced uh, Sharon to me. Sarah remained firm in her resolve as she took a good hard look toward the future. I don't know any of the specifics, but I do know that you're contemplating something to help Yuri. And I know you've been blaming yourself and feeling like you can't accomplish anything. But didn't you take action by coming to me for advice? It's the same for me too. All I've done is think about what I can do to help. I haven't done anything special. Thank you, Sarah. I can only assume that these sentiments have saved me more than once in the past. Even though I can't remember anything. Everything. Well, don't get your hopes up too much. It's un unlikely that me stepping in will change the status quo in any dramatic fashion. To the very end, it's more a matter of the choices you and Yuri make. Very true. I'll trust what you say, Sarah. Time is running out, and there were still things I could do. I watched Sarah return to her lab until she was completely out of sight. In the end, it doesn't even matter. Sarah never told me specifically what she had in mind. Sharon was developed in a massive, with a massive budget over the course of many long months and years, so I knew she couldn't pull off anything of a similar scale. Which left me wondering, what could she be planning? She told me not to get ahead of myself, but I held my hand up high and embraced the hope of what if within my heart. It was possible Sarah's actions could bring change. I may have finally found what I could do to help. All of it was for the sake of Yuri's happiness. Yeah, man. Two, one. A few days had passed since my conversation with Sarah at the birdcage. I hadn't said a word to her about Yuri, nor about her treatment, ever since. Yuri and I kept our daily routine of walking to and from school together, but I made an effort to avoid mentioning her illness as much as possible. Sarah had said she had an idea in mind. But watching time pass by without seeing any progress on that topic was making me uneasy. I realized later that I would have to figure something out on my own. Something about sitting around waiting felt sitting around waiting felt wrong to me. I would make clear how I felt to Yuri one more time. It might lead to a fight and she may get angry at me for it. Regardless, there was still a chance I could do something to help Yuri. Yeah? After school, Yuri and I walked home together like usual, and I had her drop by my place. Yuri, we need to talk. Shun, wait. I need to talk to you too. Yuri? She wasn't acting like her usual self. She seemed to be in a happier mood, and her smile was practically bursting at the seams. Let me go first, okay? When I told you I love you, I meant it. I really, really do love you. That's why it's so painful for me to die and leave you behind. I want to keep loving you forever. I want to be with you always. Yuri. It was a relief to hear her say something positive again. If she would say all of this to me, then I felt like I could be direct with her about my feelings too. I wanted to talk about that too. However, I'm going to die soon. Nothing can change that. Huh? And here I thought she might tell me she had decided to undergo treatment. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of thought that too. Like, I thought she was gonna say that. Based on how she was acting, that didn't appear to be the case. Hear me out, and don't get angry. I will die before long. But. I would like to leave myself to you when I pass. What the fuck does that mean? Yuri, what are you talking about? <laughs> the fuck? This. Yuri held out a tiny cube-shaped object. What is it? Come on, come on. Hey. Despite my apparent confusion, she paid me no mind and placed what resembled glasses into the bridge of my nose. 
What are these? Yuri, please tell me what's going on. It'll be way quicker if you see it for yourself. See what? Damn, that's kind of cool. <coughs> huh? There were two of them. <laughs> How? Wait. Upon closer inspection, that wasn't the case at all. The second Yuri looked just like her, but I could tell she was slightly different. Is she an image I'm seeing through the glasses you just put on me? Right, she's virtual. Nice to meet you, Shun. She spoke? She does. Sarah made her for me. Sarah did? That's what she said. Right, unlike Sharon, she has no body, but she operates under the Trino system. She possesses my memories. She is me. She's you? Since she was a part of the Trino system, it should be adequate to consider her similar to Sharon. After all, Sharon possessed the memories of my little sister prior to her passing, too. Similarly, virtual Yuri possessed Yuri's memories. I decided to give her a bunch of stuff before I die. My memories, mindset, everything. So even if my physical body dies, my mind will live on. The virtual Yuri faced me and smiled sweetly. Are you okay with that, Yuri? Yeah, I'm going to die and I know just how depressed you'll be. I agree. For your sake, I think it would be fantastic if I could be cured. But there is no curing this. It's my body, so I know that better than anyone. No way. You don't need to accept it all right away. But if it's alright with you, I'd like you to try spending some time with her. With the virtual Yuri. Yeah, I obviously can't move in with you or anything. But you could definitely stay with her, couldn't you? I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to spend time with her. <laughs> you don't need to overcomplicate things. As long as you wear that device, I can come see you anytime. Exactly, just put it on anytime you want to see me. Exactly. Repeating what the other say, says makes it difficult to tell who is who. Her personality and memories were identical to Yuri. Their voices and speech patterns even match too. They are practically twins. Anyway, I'd like you to test everything out and see if you'll be able to get along well with each other. If I'm able to leave her behind, then I can be with you forever. Yuri had an incredibly bliss blissful smile. It was probably fine to think of this like an experiment, but it left me conflicted. You do want to be with me forever too, don't you, Shun? I do, but you're still alive. I don't want to think about you dying. That isn't it. Once I die, I won't be able to do anything for you anymore. I'll end up making you feel all alone in the world. But if the virtual me is there, I'm sure it'll help make you feel less lonely over time. I don't want to leave you by yourself. So I'd like you to think of my virtual self as if it were me. I recalled what Sarah had told me. What did living mean to Yuri? I hope you can think of it as getting to spend more time with me. But if you can't do that, then I'm fine with dropping it. This is surely something Yuri had Sarah make for her after seeking her advice. Knowing that, I couldn't turn her down so easily. I just need to turn this on once in a while when you're not when you aren't around. That's right. Whew, if powering this on was all it took, that was simple enough. For the time being, I think I'll have to try it out before I'm com completely sure, but you're okay with it. Yeah. Yay! 
Thank you, Shen. If I was being honest with myself, I didn't want to think about Yuri dying and wish she would undergo treatment. However, I also hoped that we could spend as much time together as possible. She and Sarah had put this together for my sake, and out of a des desire to do whatever she could for me in the, in the here and now while she was still alive. If I considered this an experiment, just spending time with a virtual Yuri may not be so bad. Can you see her too, Yuri? I was the only one wearing the glasses like de device. However, Yuri was acting as though she could also hear virtual Yuri's voice. Yeah, I'm wearing the glasses too, see? Huh? When you wear them, they adjust to light in order to make them invisible. Sort of futuristic, huh? Sounded like Yuri didn't know everything about these special glasses. My only choice might be to ask Sarah about their inner workings. So, the cube thing I gave you is what you would call the main virtual unit, which is currently powered on. While it's on, anyone near the main unit and wearing... <laughs> While it's on, anyone near the main unit and wearing those glasses will be able to see the virtual me. They use bone conduction headphones, so even if there is some degree of sound liquid leakage, the people around you should basically be unable to hear her. That's amazing. That would likely mean I would have to use great caution when talking to virtual Yuri out in public. Then again, it wasn't uncommon to see people talking on the phone via Bluetooth earpieces, so people in town shouldn't have any real reason to be suspicious. Don't you think it's a lot like that VR stuff that's all the rage these days? Damn, it's not like a boomer, Yuri. <laughs> it's all the rage these days, those kids and their VR games. Sarah thought it would be easy for people to understand if you explained it that way. Makes sense to me, SpongeBob. If you're not sure of something, I'm sure she could tell you if you ask. Yeah, ask me anything, okay? Virtual Yuri proudly yet sweetly smiled. That smile truly was identical to Yuri's. Virtual Yuri, now I wonder what I should call her. I'd like if you call me Yuri. So she says, yeah, it would be good if you called her by by my name. Got it. Nice to meet you, Yuri. Nice to meet you. Okay, so not really a robot, but kind of. <laughs> ha. Huh. After walking Yuri home, I heaved a huge sigh. Sarah had mentioned she was going to do something in some form or fashion, but this? I never thought it would come to this. Sharon was an amazing piece of technology, but this virtual entity was just as incredible as she was. Still though, would we really be able to hold a proper conversation? Out of, out of sheer curiosity, I powered up the VR device. Sharon! I wasn't expecting to see you so sh so soon. Wouldn't be accurate to call her a look-alike. She was virtually identical. The real Yuri wasn't here right now for comparison, but it felt like she never left. You look kind of conflicted. Well, yeah, I am. It's not so easy to live together with a virtual copy of my girlfriend just because she asked me to. Well, this is a little different from living together. I don't have a physical body, so I can't help you out with anything like I have up until now. And I can only see you when you have me powered on. It gives me some mixed feelings, too. Do you dislike me? It's not like that. I mean, from what I can tell, you look exactly like her. So much so that if we kept up ordinary conversation, I might sure I'm sure I would forget your virtu virtual at all. I can read. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh, go tell that to Sarah. She pulled multiple all nighters to make me. The way she moved and spoke didn't seem mechanical or pre recorded in the slightest. You really are virtual, right? Almost made me wonder if Yuri was doing the talking someone, somewhere out of sight. Well, do you want to check for yourself? Check how? Watch. My outstretched hand passed straight through Yuri's body. 
No kidding. Alright, so I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, see you in the next one. Peace.